Welcome to the live streaming of the Holy Mass from the Redemptus Media Center. Let us pray for the following intentions during this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Today in the Gospel we hear Jesus telling us that I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Jesus calls us not to look into ourselves, but to also look into the life of others who are struggling in and around us. And he calls us to reach out to them with hearts of compassion. And today we pray for that grace, especially in this Holy Eucharist, that we may be merciful people, that we may be people full of compassion like Jesus. And as we partake in this Holy Eucharist, let us close our eyes for a moment. Let us call to mind our sins, especially for the times when we have failed to be merciful, when we have failed to be compassionate, when we have failed to help those who are in need, maybe our family members, maybe our friends, maybe our neighbors those who are asking for help, and we fail to help them. We fail to love them. Let us ask pardon and forgiveness. Let us together pray. I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in and what, what I have failed to do, through my, my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. 
O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses and Aaron did many wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his land. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill the lambs at twilight. They then shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the linton of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head, with its leg and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord." The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you, when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response, the cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the name of the Lord. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the name of the Lord. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. Kindly rise for the gospel. Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, 
Jesus went through the cornfields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Or oh, have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, sacrifice. It is a word which we do not like to hear. And it is a word that we always take in a negative connotation. That I have to give up something. Something from my part, something which I like. I have to deprive myself of something. And this is what sacrifice means for me. But what does sacrifice entail? When we do sacrifice for our family members, I know that my family is benefiting from it. A parent sacrifices his or time and energy for the benefit of their family. A child who is studying in 10th standard, or one of the important exams, gives up watching TV so that he, he or she can score good marks. Or there are people who are striving for a healthy life and they, they make sacrifices to eat a good diet and give up junk food and exercise daily, get up on time, everything for the benefit of their life. And therefore, every sacrifice that we make is not just for the benefit of ourselves, but it is also for the benefit of the other. And today, this is what the readings remind us of today. In the first reading, we see that God gives Moses the commandment to have this meal of Passover in remembrance of what God has done. And what does this meal entail for them? It is not just any ordinary meal. God tells them that with the remembrance of what I have done, you also have to remember something very important. When God tells them that on the 10th day of each month, you take an animal from the flock and one for each family, he also says that if you are a small family, you go and share it with your neighbor. And this meal of sacrifice, this meal of Passover was not just a meal for one's family, but it was also a communal celebration. And it is not just a sacrifice for oneself, but each one of the family members, everyone were participating in the meal. And it was the good for the good of the community. And in the gospel reading, is precisely what we see, what Jesus is trying to point out. That the Pharisees we see were trying to keep up the law, helping people to keep up the law, that you have to observe the law because God has given us the law. And they were the legal experts of the law. The Pharisees were not bad people, but they were trying to help people to keep up to what God has called us to do. But today, we see them, that when Moses gave the Ten Commandments, it was not easy to apply them in our way of life, in, in the daily life. But 
It is through this the Pharisees extrapolated and showed them how they have to live these laws in their life. And one of the ways is by keeping the Sabbath. And how do we keep the Sabbath? By not doing any ma manual work. And this is, the, this is what the law stated. And therefore, when they saw the disciples plucking ears of corn, they saw them working for the Sabbath. They did not see that the disciples were hungry and were in need of food. Their only focus was the law. But Jesus argues with them, places before them two important arguments. The first one is about David. Now when David and his men were hungry and when they were in the temple, they ate the bread of the presence and this bread was only meant for the priest. But David ate the bread. It was when they were hungry, they chose to eat the bread. Mercy was greater than the sacrifice here. Yeah. And secondly, we see that the priests are constantly working in the temple. Now, what does Jesus say about this? On the Sabbath day, many people were coming to the temple and they were making sacrifices and the priests were constantly working in the temple. They were keeping things ready for the worship. They were preparing the animals. And in so, Jesus is telling them that you are breaking the law. The priests are guilt, guilty for breaking the law. But why were they breaking the law? They were not breaking the law. They were helping people to come and worship. And it was for the good of the community. And that is what Jesus was reminding them. That the priests were working on the Sabbath day because the community needed to worship and therefore they had to work. Jesus today reminds us that our sacrifices are good. We all fast and pray. We all go for novenas. Every nine days we make the novenas. Then we go to various shrines. We kneel down and pray. We raise our hands and pray. We make sacrifices for our families and everything is good. God truly loves you for your walk towards your personal holiness. He doesn't condemn you because you are making sacrifices, but He loves you. And today, as He loves you, He is giving you another message. That let this love which was looking into a personal holiness, let it look outward towards the other. That my sacrifice is not just limited only to me, but it calls to share in the life of the other, to look at those who are suffering, to look at those who are struggling in their life, to look at those who are in need of God's touch and, it, and, to, and you have to be that instrument in their life. And that is what God is calling us that I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Because when we are merciful, we automatically sacrifice ourselves. We give ourselves to God and for His people. Today, God is asking us for more, not just to be complacent with our holiness, to what I can do for God, but truly what God wants from me is to be a compassionate person, to be a merciful person, and to be His instrument of mercy and compassion in this world. And let us together pray for that grace in this Eucharist, that we may be His instruments of compassion and mercy. Do not just grow alone in our holiness, but to take others along with us in our walk to holiness. Let's pray for this grace. Take our breath, we
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good for his church. Look upon the offering of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Merciful God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, of God of hosts, host, heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth are full of, of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With a smile on our faces, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, good morning. Today we have another new phase in our Redemptorist Media Center. Uh, one who celebrated the Holy Mass and broke the world beautifully for us is Father Savio Fernandez. He belongs to the province, Vice Province of Magella. At present, he is serving in the district of Nashik, Maharashtra, as a missionary in a remote village. Continue to pray for him and his mission. And please do join us for the evening rosary at 7 for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.